Okay, we're in. We're uh, we're online here, and uh, let me go ahead and kind of make, make a few adjustments and see everybody coming in line with this, Lou. I had a, a song I was going to play before, a kind of an intro, but we had a phone call, and we weren't able to do that. But uh, I'm live on here, Moto Fellowship um, Sunday, the special Sunday night. I call it Sunday night special. And we've got Lee Ramage, uh, Marty Smith's best bud. And I want to. we're going to talk about Lee, but we're going to let uh, people come on the program here. Um, like I said, I apologize for not having an uh, intro, a time intro like I did the last two weeks. And we'll be doing that again. But we had some te technical difficulties, so I wasn't able to uh, have the earlier nice, beautiful song. And we had some neat, neat, neat film of Marty Smith back when he was younger. Uh, that somebody had sent me, and it's all over the internet. You can see there's been so much posted about uh, Smitty, and we call him Smitty back in the day. And of course, Lee has all kinds of things he's going to talk about. But I want to kind of just pre preempt this and just uh, share a bit uh, about the program and, and everything. You know, and we know last Monday, the 26th, there was a it was a terrible tragedy with uh, Marty. And Nancy, but you know what? We're not going to concentrate on that. We're going to concentrate on the the man, Marty Smith, the woman, Nancy Smith. Nancy Sauer was her first name. Wasn't at least was it Nancy uh, Sauer? What was her name? Or, or Sauer. Last? Nancy Jean Sauer. Sauer. Nancy Jean Sauer. We're going to talk about uh, the good things that uh, they accomplished in life and and the precious kids they had. It was great that they've had a great family, but. Uh, we're going to basically stay on the greatness of Marty Smith. So I want to introduce my guest tonight, Lee Ramage. And uh, I met Lee many years ago <clears throat> after I uh, quit racing. Lee's father is a pastor. And uh, Lee uh, invited me out to California to uh, speak at their youth group and so forth. And I went out there and that's when I met Lee. Lee, when was that we met, partner? Gosh, that was at a San Diego Supercross that was when it was still in the center oh, stadium. Smith, so, I'm sorry, I messed up here. Say that again. That well, we met when you were coming over to San Diego to do the invocation for the Supercross when it was in Qualcomm Stadium before it went over to the baseball stadium. And um, gosh, it was it had to be. Let's see, we were in the we were in this house in Levenheim. Encinitas area, and I think my son Robert was just born, so he's thirty now. So, it had to be close to thirty years ago. Time flies. We're having fun. I tell you what, but time flies. Yeah. We're not having fun too, unfortunately. But, uh, well, you know, I know um, I uh, I haven't. We've spoken a bit this week, and we've been texting back and forth. And I know it was a a, a terrible thing that happened last Sunday. But you know, I wanted to have you on, Lee, to just talk about. Marty Smith and uh, what he meant to you and your your friendship, your uh, the way y'all met and everything. So how did you and Marty meet anyway, Lee? Well, you know, it was meant to be. You know, Marty and I were meant to, uh, it was divine that uh, uh, we were meant to meet. And um, I was just barely 14, might not even have been 14 yet. But, uh, of course, I just started racing dirt bikes and been out to Carlsbad maybe a couple times. I was a beginner and I was a really terrible beginner, by the way. I just was super, super slow, didn't have any talent. Um, I remember my first race, there were eight people in the race and I got seventh and the guy that got eighth broke and the, guy, the person that got sixth was a girl. So, I mean, I couldn't have been, I couldn't have been worse. And, but Marty was still my girl. <laughs> yeah, Pam. She even kicked my front wheel on the uphill, but um, but I never wanted to race again after that. But but I got going again, and and of course Marty was my hero then. I had posters all over my wall, and and uh, my father uh, ran a Ford dealership in um, in San Diego called University Ford, and and Marty went in there one time with Nancy to buy a truck in 1977 and uh, my dad recognized him right away and from the posters on my wall and he called me you know landline back then and said hey i got somebody who wants to talk to you in in uh, in my office and so he puts him on the phone it was like hey lee it's marty smith and i'll never forget it i thought he was full i thought it was a joke and uh and i was really in awe and he said your dad told me if uh if i sold you if he sold me this truck at cost 
uh, he, if you took me right, if I took you riding, he would sell me this truck at cost. And I said, well, are you going to take me riding? And he said, you know, I want the truck at cost. Absolutely. So Marty was a man of his word. And a few days later, he came by and picked me up and took me riding. And that was how we met. He, uh, you know, just uh, it was a one it was a one time deal. You know, you get the truck, you take my son riding. And uh, for some reason, Marty liked me and he never stopped coming and picking me up and taking me riding. And we, we would ride at least once a week together and he would get behind me and yell at me and tell me I was sitting down too soon. And it was like I was his first student, you know, and he was 19 and I was 14. And it was just kind of a I was playing uh, I was playing, uh, uh, you know, fantasy camp every day. I could couldn't believe it. We we're just becoming friends right from that day. That's awesome. And, and, and yeah. so you all would ride together a lot. I mean, back when he was a team Honda rider, you were going riding with him and, and out in the, in the desert and so forth. And, and well, he would take us to, um, there was two tracks. It, well, one track in particular he would ride at the most. It was called Sorrento Valley. And, uh, you know, me not being a very good rider at the time, um, I could barely get to the track because it, you had to ride through this this tunnel that was about 300 feet long it went under two freeways uh, uh interstate five and it was a, a tunnel that was just i think warren talked about it last time last week and you would have to ride under this tunnel and you had to go over these two bars these two support bars well these bars were actually designed to keep people out because you could get in there and walk through the tunnel real easily and get over to this other area on the other side of the freeway and so uh marty just a genius on a motorcycle back then he just ride kind of up and around these bars and and i think i slipped and sl slid and had to drag my bike through the bar and finally got through uh, but as you're dry riding through that tunnel, you're scraping your helmet on the top and you always it always shocked you because you hear this and your helmet always was scraped by the time you got out to the ride. But that's where we go. And it was tech, terribly te technical. And um, I couldn't even get around the track at first. I think Warren mentioned that, like, you know, it was significantly more technical than Carlsbad Raceway. It was um, it was in a valley. It was in between two valleys. And these valleys were like that had hills that were so almost vertical. And the track would would go up and down these 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 uh, uh, this, this side of the hill and it would turn before you would get to the bottom. So that's why Marty's the best cornering racer in history, because he you had this little rut that you would have to stick your wheels in and 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 if your wheel popped out of that rut you'd have to put your foot on the seat cuz you were sliding all the way down to the bottom of the hill anyway yeah that he just kept taking me there hello i, I yeah i'm i'm talking here yeah i'm online there uh yes sir can, can i yeah this is Steve Wise yes Tyler is yes, this is me yeah i'm talking here at work yeah, we're doing a program right now, but I want to call and, and, and take your call there. And uh, Lee and I are on the line right now. And uh, but I well, well listen, I, I want you to know that I, Lee and I talk extensively about this program, and uh, your your wishes are absolutely going to be honored as far as that goes. Don't 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 even be concerned about that, Tyler. And thank you so much for for calling me, and uh, look forward to meeting you, young man. I've heard great things about you, and your dad was a fantastic man, and I really enjoyed knowing him as well. Uh, we'll we'll be in touch, buddy. Bye bye, bye bye. Well, that was uh, Tyler Smith. Just called me there, and uh, uh, I just um, God, I don't know what to say. My heart kind of goes out to the young man. In the family, hmm. but uh, you know the family has certain desires. I know a lot of people would like to know situations, but you know what? We're just gonna we're just gonna honor Marty like Warner Reed and I did last week as well, and uh, um, just do that because a lot of things are gonna come out. And the last thing I want to do is uh, like you know be uh, you know like there's there's nothing to glory in here other than here. The thing we're glorying about is that. He is with Jesus, Nancy with Jesus, and their mom and dad. And, you know, God doesn't see death the way we do. And as human beings, we see death in a, in a different way sometimes. And, and uh, you know, we grieve. No doubt we grieve as human beings as, as, uh, that have souls. We grieve and we sorrow. And there's a time, the scripture says there's a time to grieve and there's a time to rejoice. And 
I know this the grieving period for here is going to be extended as well because of the coronavirus that's going on, and it's probably going to be a while before anything happens, uh, any memorial, anything like that. I think Lee it might be doing something. I don't know if you want to mention anything, Lee, about anything that's going on in your world there. But you know what? We're gonna we're gonna just talk about Marty and. I apologize if it causes anybody to grieve or any way, but I, you know what? Well, Marty would want us to talk about good things. He would want us to to honor his career and his life as a, a husband, a father. Um, him and Nancy were married so many years, and Lee can tell us more about that. But uh, that's all we're going to do tonight is honor Marty Smith and, and talk about him and, and remember the good. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hey. Well, I'm getting another phone call. You're calling me now, Lee. Did you want to tell me something? Boy, I tell you what, we're getting all kinds of stuff here. Let me see. Uh, I apologize. Uh, amen. Get it. Okay. Bless you, man. Um, you know what, folks? We had to um, we had just to go ahead and kind of change our plan here. Um, God, this has been harder for me than I realized. Uh, but um, uh, mm, strange, strange things tonight. Anyway. Well, you know what, Father, in the name of Jesus, I, I we just plan to uh, to do this, Lord. But a man plans his ways, but the Lord, you direct our steps. And God, however you direct us here with all that's happened in this world and all that's going on here in, in, in the life of Marty and Nancy Smith, well, we just, we just pray for the family. We pray you'd comfort the family and comfort all those that are mourning. There's a time to mourn and a time to rejoice. And Lord, we are mourning. We're mourning for the life of Marty Smith and Nancy Smith, Father. And we just want to honor them. We will honor them. And uh, Lord, we're going to honor you as well. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You know, I, met, I said something earlier that, that God doesn't see our passing the way we do as human beings. And I know um, Marty was a great man and, a, and a, an honored hero and a, and a God to many, but you know, Marty wasn't a God. We're not gods. None of us are gods. We're all going to be passing in this world. And, uh, you know, a while back, Kobe Bryant passed and, um, you know, some of the big stars that in the world of sports and the world of, uh, of life, um, they, they come and go. And you know what? That's the thing is we're all going to stand before God. Every one of us are going to stand before the Lord. And, uh, on that day, and I love, though, the scripture in the Bema seat, when we stand before Christ in, in the Bema seat of judge, the judgment, it's not a negative judgment. It's an affirming judgment. It's, it's, a, it's a judgment of approval. That's really what the Bema seat judgment is. And uh, if you came on here to hear about Marty Smith, we're probably going to go another way. So uh, <laughs> I may lose a few people. But that's OK. I didn't even get time to change my shirt. I, I had my shirt on and. And I forgot all about putting on my natural shirt. I was getting all set up here and, and talking with Lee and everything. And uh, so I, I do apologize. I'm getting another message here. Let me, let me look here and see what these messages are saying to me. Okay. Amen. Amen. Well, um, I praise God for his goodness. And uh, we're just going to. Talk about the Lord and and um, and build him up. That's what we're gonna do. So okay. I apologize. We're having this is live broadcast, and uh, I totally understand. We're on live broadcast. I'm getting text from um, from different people. And you know, you know what? Um I, uh, I just, man, this is really uh, kind of strange, but uh, I totally get it, totally understand. So, uh, uh, man, 
I'm sorry, folks. I really, really apologize. Things are things are kind of gone diverted another way. A few texts I'm getting and everything. So I'm going to just uh, talk about God's goodness because God is good. And like I said earlier on my program, tonight is going to be a ministry night. It's going to be a night where we lift up the name of Jesus and talk about the name of Jesus Christ and build him up. And uh, the Tuesday night, we're going to talk about racing and so forth a little further. But, um, you know, I don't really know exactly what we're going to do Tuesday. I would, I was planning on having um, Punk getting all kind of phone calls here. Let's see. They're going to have to leave a text. I was planning on uh, uh, having Dave Arnold on, and we may have him on talk about Team Honda. But, you know, the last thing I want to do is, is uh, you know, carry this thing too far with Marty. I don't really know what people are expecting, but you know, the thing is we're all, we're all going to pass. We're all going to be in this world and we're all going to, we're all going to pass no doubt about it. And, and uh, it's unfortunate. I'm so, it's so unfortunate what happened, but the world's talking about it and uh, people are going to talk about it. And if, if it, it, it is what it is, but uh, I'll do, do my best to, to share God's goodness in it all because what my experience of, with Marty was in racing. And, and of course we had uh, major, major competition, but I mean, when, you know, we got a call last week, we we're doing the show with Warren with Bob Hanna called in and uh, you know, Todd Huffman made a, a, a really a statement that was so true without a uh, Marty Smith, there wouldn't have really been a Bob Hanna the way it came out because the battle back in the early seventies, no doubt about it, or the mid seventies, no doubt about it was, um, with Marty and Bob when Bob came on the scene. Of course, Marty dominated in 1975 on that RC 125. And then when uh, Bob Hanna came in, then Bob Hanna and Marty went at it and Bob ended up winning that year. But that was a year that I was able to uh, put it on Marty and Bob in one race in, in Maryland on a privateer 125, which was incredible at that time. And I remember that race. I, I've got a picture of that race and I'm hoping to find it uh, next week. We have Dave on. I'm hoping to find that race, and uh, there was a there was a, uh, a a picture that someone took when uh, when I was ahead of Marty by a ways, and and Marty got in second place, but I was 18 seconds ahead of Marty at the time in a 45 minute moto, and uh, I was on a $600 production CR125, and Marty was on the RC125 uh, Type One at the time <clears throat> and marty caught me on the last lap he caught up to me on the very last lap of a 45 minute moto and we had a knockdown drag out for one lap and uh i ended up winning but uh that was really one of my heydays with, you know with marty smith racing against him and of course we we entered many many races together marty was one of the greatest motocross racers to ever put uh, his leg over a motorcycle and be, of course being from california and being uh on the factory Honda team, no doubt riding those RC uh, bikes and in, in the red gear was uh, was was huge. And we all wanted to be Marty Smith. Really, I was telling somebody that Marty Smith was kind of like uh, the Brad Pitt or the Tom Brady of, of the racing world. There's no doubt about that. And uh, he had uh, he was a, had a fantastic career, and though he was injured in 1978. I, I believe he had a hip injury, and which is unfortunate, but um, you know, it is what it is, and, and we're here, and uh, there's going to be talk about uh, Marty from here on out. I think uh, Gary Ogden, uh, he Facebook friended me the other day, and I we got a friend, and he wrote in there that Marty will always be, be in our hearts, and that's exactly right. Marty will be in our hearts uh, in the racing world, just like uh, Kobe Bryant or some of the great pro football players did it pass? I, I think a junior Seau, of course, that was a, a tragedy as well. What happened to junior Seau, um, the uh, linebacker from the Chargers? But I mean, you know, those things happen, and um, it's going to be in our minds, in our hearts, and in our thoughts forever. Because when you have someone like that, like Marty Smith, um, he was such an icon of the sport and on those red bikes. But but you know what? I want you to know that 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 God sees things differently than we do. And there's a scripture in, in Thessalonians I want to read where it says, Paul's writing and he says, um, I do not want you to be ignorant concerning those who have fallen asleep or those who have passed through to the next life. Least we sorrow 
as, as others do without any hope. You know, the beautiful thing is when we are Christians and we believe in Jesus Christ, when we've asked Jesus Christ to come into our life and we have him as our Savior and our Lord, my friend, we don't have to sorrow like the world. The world has great sorrow because there's really no hope. There's really no hope for the people that don't believe in God. There's no hope for them if they don't have faith in Jesus Christ. And my friend, it's all about faith. It's simple faith in God. It's believing what the unseen realm is. It's believing that we are going to another place. We are going to be in glory. There's, there's, there's a place that's not of this world. It's, it's a place in the spirit where you and I, because we simply believe, because we simply stand in faith upon Jesus Christ and we believe in him, what he did for mankind, because of that simple thing, because of that, my friend, we have hope. We have hope that this life isn't everything. This is not all there is. Just this life. You know, I think of that song, is that all there is? Is that all there is? It was made so many years ago. And I'm getting another phone call. Well, I'm on, I'm on the show. Man, I tell you, my phone is going crazy. My texts are going crazy. And, and I'm just going to concentrate on you. And uh, so, um, you know, is that all there is? You know, my friend, this life isn't all that it's cropped up to be. I mean, look what's going on in the world right now. The world is a mess. Jesus said, Jesus said, before I come back, there's going to be great tribulation, great trouble, nation rise against nation, famine, pestilence, earthquakes are going to be in various places, my friend. And and I'm not an end-time preacher in that sense, but I'm telling you what, the world doesn't look so good anymore like it did before, even six months ago. But, you know, in the midst of all these challenges, in the midst of all these trouble, we can have joy and strength because Jesus Christ is in our heart, because Jesus Christ is our Lord and our Savior. And we might grieve, we might have sorrow temporarily, but when we are looking to the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords, my friend, we can know there's a joy unspeakable and full of glory because we are, we are going to a different place. We are going to what the Bible calls a new heaven and a new earth. And that's what I believe. And it's simply because we have faith. Isn't that amazing? It's by faith. It's not by how good we are. If we keep the certain laws, this, that, and the other, it's by faith. When we call upon Jesus and we accept him by faith into our life and something happens when faith really comes into a soul, into a person, something happens in their heart, in their soul, in their spirit, in their body. Something happens. We begin being changed. We begin being changed. We're instantly changed because we receive the spirit of Christ, the spirit of Christ. But then what happens is we grow also more and more into Christ's likeness in our mortal body. We become more and more like Christ. Our, our character, our thoughts, our words, our words especially. That's the way we're known more than anything, my friends, by our words and by our actions. When our, when our words and actions line up with that we can see that we're growing and maturing. Just because someone don't make a mistake and then because, because someone, maybe because they really don't have the knowledge of God or the understanding of God, maybe the way they should have, uh, just because of that, that doesn't uh, discount somebody from being a Christian. And I know that, that, um, that a lot of people judge others by uh, words and thoughts and everything. And yes, we, we can understand, we can discern that, but we need to judge ourselves by that. We want to judge ourselves by words and thoughts because then we can really know where we are in our life as a believer. And I'm going to tell you something. God has is, God is really gotten a hold of me the last couple months and uh, really just encouraging me, encouraging me to think in a way of holiness, think in a way of purity, think in a way of walking in love and grace and joy, no matter what, because life is challenging and uh there's things that happen. And you know what? God is going to even use the situation with Marty Smith. Uh, I, I think a lot of people are going to be shooken by that to realize, you know what? E even though we might think in certain ways or certain areas of life to say, you know what? Life isn't going to last forever for none of us, not any of us. We are gonna, we're all going to pass through. And what God is doing in me with different situations in my own life, and and I know speaking with Lee earlier, uh, he, was, he told me it's really kind of just 
made him realize things more. And, and he was just telling me that, man, I, I just want to live for God. I want to be all I can be for God and to touch lives for God. And, you know, that happens when we get shooken up a little bit, when we get, when we shake a little bit. And my friend, that's what's happening right now to the whole world, because the whole world is seeing that this isn't a given. I mean, everything isn't going to just stay the same all the time. Things happen. Things change overnight. And uh, I, I tell you, um, you know, with this all happening and realizing that uh, that our life may be interrupted, interrupted greatly, uh, which it has been the last six weeks. And, uh, you, you know, we, it makes us reevaluate really what is our purpose? Why are we here? What is the, the real reason why we're here? Well, you know what? I, I thank God for a great motorcycle career. I had a great one. But my friend, that really means nothing when it's all said and done. It means nothing. And I'm going to say something real strong right here. Real strong. And anybody that believes that, that some sports casters are God or whatever, listen, the Bible says what is important to man is an abomination to God. I'm sorry. It's just the facts. And he was talking about the Pharisees who love money who always were on in the in the front of everything. And my friend, all the things about stardom and all the movie stars and everything like that, my friend, all that's going to pass away. But I appreciate, I appreciate athletes and, and people that are well-known you know, senators, congressmen, or people that are that have status in the world. I appreciate it when they say, you know what? Jesus Christ is my Lord. And when I hear that, when I hear someone saying, Jesus Christ is my Lord, that's the people that I honor. Those are the ones that I honor. I'm not going to honor someone just because they're great in the world. I mean, that's awesome and wonderful. But you know what? We honor those who honor God. That's who we're going to honor. We honor those who honor Jesus Christ. And I'm, I'm so thankful because that, that when it's all said and done, my friend, that's all we have. We're all going to pass away. We're all going to be gone in, in the twinkling of an eye. I mean, I mean, look what happened last Monday. Everything was going great. And, I, you know, there's been pictures posted all over. I didn't post it. So I hope nobody gets mad at me. And by the way, I did get, uh, you know, someone asked me, cut to me early and say, you sure you, you, you ought to be doing this? Well, I prayed about it. I thought, well, and Lee and I talked about it, but apparently it, Lee just couldn't find it. It was hard to do it after he got on. Lee really struggled in the beginning, but he told me, I want to come on. I want to, I want to talk about Marty in my life, but it really, it got, was too much for him. So I totally understand that. But you know what, my friend, the thing is, is that it for you and me to realize this life is a vapor. It's a twinkling of an eye. It's here today and gone tomorrow. And that picture that was posted all over Facebook and, and of Lee and, and Marty and, and Nancy and Tammy in, in the dune buggy, they were having a great time. And that picture was just moments before a tragedy. And, and, and my friend, that can happen to any one of us. You know, we can leave our house in, in the morning to go to work or go somewhere and, and be gone uh, just driving down the road. I mean, we, we are not promised one second more than what we have. Though the, the scripture does say if we believe in Jesus we're, and we are walking with him, God's going to protect us and watch over us and, and help us. And that doesn't mean that bad things are going to happen. And I do get a kick out of a lot of these, a lot of preachers say, you know what, if you believe God and you're walking with God, nothing bad's going to happen to you. Really? Really? Is that right? Well, what about Apostle Paul? I mean, he was left for stone, stone three times, left for dead. I mean, he had all kind of trouble. He had all kind of problems. What about Peter? He was crucified upside down. Listen, just because we're a Christian doesn't mean that we are not going to face bad things. Doesn't mean that we're not going to face tragedy from time to time. I mean, that has nothing to do with it because Jesus said it rains on the just and the unjust. And so nobody can say, well, that happened bad. So they must have not been walking with God or, or that, or that happened good. I mean, there's a lot of people that are evil, in my opinion, that are wicked people that, things go well. I mean, look at Je Epstein, I mean, that Jeffrey uh, Epstein guy, I mean, supposedly died in his cell. He ain't dead. He's not dead. He's somewhere in over in Israel with a face, his face all changed and everything. He's not dead. A lot of evil people, a lot of evil people have a lot of good things happen to them too. It doesn't matter. Just because good or bad happens in this world has nothing to do with someone's life. What has to do with our life is do we have the testimony of Jesus Christ? Do we have the word of prophecy, the spirit of prophecy in our heart, in our life, and the testimony of Jesus, loving not our lives even unto death if we need be? Because, my friend, really and truly, isn't it amazing? I've heard reports 
of uh, mosques being open. I mean, everything's cool with Islam, but <laughs> us Christians, they shut us down. By the way, my pastor friend, Phil Corzine, never stopped services. We stopped the first week weekend. He never stopped. And God bless him. I went to church this morning with about 100 other people and uh, listened to a good sermon by Pastor Phil. And I, I didn't care. I was going to go. And you know what? Phil didn't. He never stopped Sunday morning services, no matter what was told to him by the local authorities. He said, you know what? The most important thing in this world is church, is the people of God gathering together and lifting up the name of Jesus, talking about the name of Jesus and honoring him. And you know what? That's what Pastor Phil's done the last six weeks. <laughs> God bless him for doing that. And uh, man, I, I wish I would have I had time to put my other shirt on. I feel terrible in my old t-shirt. I was taking a nap and I totally forgot to uh, to change. I got so busy going on and I was going to put on a nicer shirt so I could look prettier for you all. But but we just, uh, we're going to wing it here with my, my evening shirt. <laughs> but uh, you know what? I just want to encourage us to know that we know that if we are in Christ, when we are in Christ, there's a protection as far as the sin realm, because when God looks at you and me in Christ, he doesn't see, he doesn't see our mistakes. He doesn't see our failures. He sees his son, Jesus Christ. That's when we're in Christ. And that's why it's so important to be in Christ. Well, Steve, how do we get in Christ? We get in Christ by asking him. We get in Christ by saying, Jesus, come into my life and I want to be in your life. Because the scripture says that Jesus Christ is in us and we're in him. He, he fulfills all in all. He is the all in all of the world. And my friend, that's the most important thing for any one of us to know, that we've accepted him as our Savior and our Lord, and we're walking with him. And you know, there's times that we're going to have drawdowns. There's times that we're going to make mistakes. There's times we're going to have trouble. There's times that we're going to go through major uh, difficulties in life. My friend, faith says no. I don't care what I see. I don't care what I feel. I don't care what's going on. God is with me and he will never leave me nor forsake me. That's what faith says. I was talking to someone earlier about different emotional effects, different emotional challenges. We, we go through anxieties and different things about that. My friend, I want you to know those are real. Those are real. Those feelings and emotions are real. But when we really understand the power we have in the name of Jesus to overcome those challenges, those troubles, those feelings, those emotional upheavals. We really understand there's power in the name of Jesus. And we speak, we speak and say, no, I am not going to accept that. I'm not going to receive that. I'm not receiving that feeling. I'm not going to receive that feeling. I'm not saying it's easy. Believe me, I've had my challenges and my my troubles as well. I know exactly what it feels like, but you know what the scripture says? We might weep in the night. We might go through a night or more than a night, a few weeks if need be, but the scripture says, but joy comes in the morning. And I want you to know, my friend, if you're going through a challenging time, I mean, the, the Smith family, they're going through a horrible time right now, the children, I know they are, but you know what? Joy eventually will come back to all of our lives. Joy eventually comes back. There's a time to grieve. There's a time to sorrow. But the joy is going to come. The joy comes back because we keep our eyes on the king. We keep our eyes on our creator, the one who formed us inside of our mother's womb, the one who makes us, and the one who strengthens us when we call upon him. So when we battle those anxiety feelings, those emotional upheaval feelings we have, when we, we battling doubt and things that we're wondering what's going on in our life, that's when God wants us to say, say, Lord, I'm trusting you. I'm standing in faith and I know and believe you're going to work this out for me. In the name of Jesus, you are going to work this out for me. And if I could tell anyone, especially the Smith children right now, for example, that's what I would tell them. You know, somehow, some way, God is going to bring you through this and it's going to be good in the end. Good in the end. I know we can't see that now, but I know that God works out all things together for good to those who love him. And that's where we have to stay. You know what? Do we really love him? And the only way we can love him, my friend, is to realize he loves us first. He loved us first. 
I mean, it's not us trying to clean ourselves up. It's not us trying to get right. It's not us trying to do better. No, 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 no. It's us coming to him. It's us turning our eyes onto him. Turn your eyes onto Jesus. That's what the, the song says. When we turn our eyes onto Jesus, that's when we find that peace, that joy, that strength. And that ability to walk in victory in this life and to be confident who we are and to be strong in who we are and to realize God is with me. He's for me and he's making my way. He's planning my way. And that's where we have to walk, my friend. That's where we have to stay. That no matter what happens, that's our testimony. That's our testimony. And uh, amen, Bobby Kyle. He knows. Brent, amen. This ain't home, folks. That's right. This ain't home. Let's see. Uh, Joe will come back, Lisa. That's right. That's right. So I, I'm just I'm just excited. You know, I was kind of, I was really struggling earlier today. I, I thought, um, I thought, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to call Lee and see how he's doing. And when I call Lee and that's when I asked him if he wanted to come on the program and, uh, and you know what? He came on there and, and for that time, but you know what? He had to go, and I totally understand it. Hey, Clint Hardick, hey, buddy, it's good to see you. I'm looking at some of the people on here with me. Bruce Bennett, James, Jeff, thank you all for coming on. Appreciate you all coming on. So, But uh, I apologize for the way this program kind of fell apart. But you know what? It's okay. If God is for us, who can be against us? That's what we need to remember. We are more than conquerors. Through the one who loves us, Jesus Christ, and um, so I, uh, I just really want us to know that we don't have to sorrow about anything. We don't have to sorrow about anything, and and keep the Smith family in your prayers. I really would appreciate that. Um, and as well as we're, I'm going to be praying for you guys. I pray for you, Motor Church family. I pray for y'all all the time, and uh, so I want you to know that. I would encourage you and thank you for your prayers. Thank you for you praying for me because I sure need your prayers. And uh, there's times that we're facing in this life and it's going to be a real, it's going to be some challenges. I'm just telling you, my friend, this, this would happen in our world today. Um, uh, Lord willing, we'll get back to normal somewhat sooner than we hoped. And I believe we're, we're going to, but, um, but you know what? <laughs> Any of y'all that really know kind of what's going on, this probably isn't the last time they're going to do this to us because our world eventually is coming into a one world government. That's just the facts. I mean, the truth is, as I read the Bible and I look at the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel, the book of Zechariah, Isaiah, I mean, I read certain prophetic writings and I just kind of shake my head and go, man, uh, you know what, my friend, we may be coming closer to the coming of the Lord the, Lord, the coming of the Lord may be sooner than we think. And even the scripture says that. Uh, Peter talked about that. But um, they were actually talking about 70 AD when the, the, new, the new covenant, the old covenant was destroyed. The temple was destroyed when um, the Roman army destroyed the temple in 70 AD that tore it down. And that brought about the prophetic words, the truth in the prophetic words where Jesus said, not one stone will stand upon another. And that actually happened. But uh, but you and I are living in a time when we need to know that we know that we are walking with Jesus and we're letting him work in us and change us and mold us more and more into his character, because that's the plan. The plan is for us to be born of the spirit of God, that the spirit of God would come inside of us and we'd be born again or born from above. That's what John 3, 3 talks about. John, Jesus, Jesus said, you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. See, Religious people or people that think religion or whatever, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a relationship in our heart where we can see the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? What is the kingdom of God? Well, it's righteousness, peace, and joy. It's a spiritual kingdom of someone who's walking in right standing with God because of their faith, because they have faith in God, because they believe in what Jesus Christ did on that cross. They believe that sacrifice that he did 2,000 years ago on that cross was for them as, the rest, as well as the rest of the world. And you know what, my friend? When we have faith in him, we're walking with him, then we're growing. We, we, we get born again, but then we're growing into that Christ-likeness where we are walking in the kingdom 
of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness means to be in right standing with God. Right standing. How do we have that? By faith in Jesus, by accepting what he did for us. That's the only way. Nothing by how good we are, by our own works, by anything we can do. It's by you and I having faith in what Jesus Christ did for us on that cross. That's how we become righteous. Simply believing. Simply taking upon ourselves his righteousness by asking him, Jesus, fill me with your love. Fill me with your joy. Fill me with your peace. Fill me with your righteousness. That's how we get it, my friend, by asking. Righteousness peace and joy. So if we're walking in the kingdom, when we walk in the kingdom of God, our testimony is righteousness, peace, and joy. And just because you might not be walking in righteousness, peace, and joy, doesn't mean you're not saved. Doesn't mean you don't have a relationship with God, but it means that God wants to make us grow more and more and more into that. That's what it is. We're growing more and more and more into righteousness, peace, and joy. And so Whenever I get out of peace, whenever I begin bowing and wondering and my soul doesn't feel right, I stop and slow down and go, okay, Lord, I need to stand peace. I want to stand peace. But see, we're bombarded with all those anxiety feelings and those emotions and those, we're wondering about this, we're wondering about that all over the place. That's when we say, no, you know what? No, I'm a child of God. I'm a son or daughter of the Most High God, and I am in Christ and he's in me. And I'm going to stand in my righteousness because of what he did, not because of what I've done, not because of my failures, not because of my good, my good or my bad. Of course, when we think about the bad then we know, we know that we we uh, we can get condemned real easy. We think about that, that, that bad. We need to learn from our mistakes, but then move on and not look back anymore. Move on. Don't look back behind us. You know, Jesus said. He said, hey, if you look back. You're not even worthy of the kingdom of God. And he wasn't saying that in a hateful, ugly way. He was just saying, hey, don't look back. Don't look back. You got to look forward. I mean, if 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 a if a farmer is driving his tractor, of course, nowadays, who knows? They probably have satellite uh, satellites driving the tractors or whatever. But back in the day, anyway, when the farmer was driving the tractor, he had to look straight ahead. He had to keep his eyes straight ahead to make sure he made those roads straight. And if we look back, when we look back, our row is going to get all wobbly. Our row, our life's going to get wobbly. No, we look forward. We look to our, the righteousness that's in Jesus Christ because he is our righteousness, not because of what we do good. He is our righteousness. Now, listen, though, Ephesians 3 also says that we are created in Christ Jesus for good works. So if we're in Christ, if we're walking with Christ, if we're desiring to follow him, we're desiring to be molded more and more into his character, my friend, good works are going to come automatically. Beautiful words are going to come automatically. Good thoughts are going to come automatically. We will get bombarded. We'll get tempted with things that aren't right. But we understand that when we grow up, as we become mature in Christ, we understand, hey, that thought, that thought isn't of God. That thought makes me feel real bad. That thought tells me that there's something wrong with me, that I'm going through these challenges and I'm never going to overcome. That thought tells me to fear. Oh, my God, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Listen, I'm not afraid of the coronavirus or whatever it is. I mean, I'm not afraid of it one bit. Uh, I'm going to walk in faith and stand and believe God. But we don't fear. But if something happened and, and let's say I got it or something, will you deal with it? Will you deal with it? If somebody catches it, you deal with it. I mean, I'm not afraid to drive my truck, but if something happens, you deal with it. You just, we deal with life and faith and things are thrown our way. Things are thrown in front of us that we're going to have challenges, but we deal with it. The best way we know how, trusting God in faith, standing and believing. That's what we do in faith, standing and believing. So righteousness, we walk in peace and then joy. So when we're in the kingdom, when we're in the kingdom of God, that is what's going to fill our heart. In right standing with God, righteousness in God, and peace and the joy of the Holy Spirit. My friend, when we don't have joy, we don't have any strength. Because in the scripture, Nehemiah says, the joy, the joy of the Lord is our strength. 
The joy of the Lord is our strength. So we don't have joy. We really don't have any strength. Now, I know there's times we go through trouble. We, we go through challenges. We go through heartache. Is We know many people are going through that this week. I, I've gone through it some this week myself. But, you know, we have times and seasons, my friend. And we're, when we are down, we are going through heaviness. That's when we just turn to the Lord and say, God, I'm going to trust you to walk me through this. Help me work it out. Help me work it out, Lord. And that's what we must do, my friend. We must keep our eyes on the king to walk in his righteousness because of him. It's because of him we're righteous, not because of us, not because anything we can do. It's because we believe in him that we're righteous. I've quoted the scripture many times in 2 Corinthians 5.21. It says, for he who knew no sin, the one who didn't even know sin, he never sinned. It's you and I. It's you and I. That's, that's the sinners, my friend. We're the ones that have failed. We're the ones that have fallen it from time to time. It's not him. He walked in this world sinless, perfect. Of course, he came in this world with perfect blood, sinless, spotless blood, because he was born of a virgin. His blood was untainted. The seed of the Holy Ghost was planted in Mary. His blood was untainted, pure. That's why, and the only reason why, his blood purifies the world of their sin if they believe. If they believe. The blood of Jesus was sacrificed for you and for me and for the world. And when we understand that, we put our faith in that righteousness, the gift of righteousness invades our heart, my friend, invades our heart. We might be feeling down. We might be feeling troubled, but our faith is still in Jesus. We're righteous. Stand in it. Stand in that righteousness, knowing who you are in Christ and stay in his peace. Jesus said, my peace, I leave you. Not as the world gives. You know, the world gives a peace. I mean, winning a motocross race, winning a race. I won, I won my, my share of them. Winning a race. I'll never forget though, when I did what what no no one's ever done, even until this day, I won the uh, Superbike Road Race in Lexington, Ohio, and I was the first rider to ever win all the different forms of racing there. The ones that I did, <clears throat> and I remember driving back from the track. I won the road race in Lexington, Ohio, and I'm driving back from the track, and I'm thinking, you know, I ought to be feeling better. I should be more uh, joyous. I it seems like I should be happier. And I I was thinking about that song. Is that all there is? 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 Is that all there is, my friend? Then just keep dancing. (laughs) Keep the blues and have a song or something like that. You know, my friend, that's what the world, the world gives a type of joy, but it only lasts for a time. It only lasts for the time. But the joy that God gives us through Jesus Christ is a joy that lasts forever. And even though, even when we're going through a tough time, even when we face challenges, that peace and that joy that he gives will stay there. And we might be outwardly perplexed. We might be going through things, but we're keeping our eyes on the king. And we just keep saying, Lord, I thank you for your peace and your joy and your righteousness in my life. Because I am in the kingdom of God. And my friend, if you believe in Jesus, you are in the kingdom of God. I want to encourage you to grow in him. Stand strong. Stand in your faith. And believe on the name above every other name. My friend, he will take us through and he will keep us until the end. He's going to keep us. You know, I don't know how that all came out, but... uh, I, I wasn't planning any of that, <laughs> but but God just brought it out of my spirit, out of my soul. And uh, I was talking to this this uh, precious lady earlier, and I was telling you know what? If you're around me, you're not going to hear negative words. I'm not going to say anything negative. I'm going to say things in faith, in faith, and believe God. Believe God in faith, my friend. Stand strong in faith. And I want to encourage us all to believe that we believe and and to know that you know that he's with you even to the end. So uh, let me see who else is on with us here tonight. So so I know I was talking, looking at the mic and a lot of people passed through Wade, there's Wade, Bobby Kyle and Ryan 
Wendy Gold. Hey, Wendy, darling, how you doing there? Joe Rodriguez. Who else do we have here? Kim Ketchum, thank you for coming on. Appreciate it. Man, I, I tell you, I, I, I'm, um, you know, I don't know what more to say. Paulette and Jeff Sloan, thank you for coming on. Thank you. I don't know what more to say, um, but um, God bless you. And uh, I don't know if we'll have Dave on or not on Tuesday. I will see. I, uh, I, I, uh, I don't know what to say, what kind of what happened tonight. So we'll just see how it works out. But hey, Kevin, how you doing, buddy? Robert Burroughs, Tim, thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're finally logging on. Well, you missed it, Tim. I appreciate it. Well, anyway, you know what? God bless y'all. And um, sorry it didn't turn out the way that we wanted it to, but I trust it turned out the way God wanted it to. So uh, amen. Well, Father, I thank you for your precious people that are on here with me tonight. Father, thank you that you love us, you care for us. And Lord, I pray, even as I prayed for the motor, motor Fellowship family, Lord, I pray for them continually, Lord, and I pray for them now that you would just bless them, keep them, make your face shine upon them, Lord, and give them your peace in Jesus' name. I appreciate you all so much. And um, you are such a blessing. Thank you all for coming on. And listen, join me Tuesday night. We'll have somebody on. Um, Dave Arnold is supposed to come on. He may, he may not. But if he does, uh, we're going to keep it on Motorcycle World. Terry Mulligan, I've been in the church since I was a kid. Know the Bible well, but learned something tonight. <laughs> what did you learn, Terry? Thank you, Terry. <laughs> T Terry, I, you know what? Um, we're going to have a talk here for a second. Terry Mulligan is on with me. He was my team manager. Terry Mulligan hired me. On Honda, 1978. I've told that story, and I'm going to tell it again. Terry, when you were walking over to the pit area, <clears throat> when you walked into the Fox truck in the pit area, uh, I, I tell you what, I saw you coming toward me, Terry. I'm going, oh, my God, Terry Mulligan, there he comes. I'm just a young whippersnapper, and Terry Mulligan told me, Steve, I want you to be, if you can be in L.A. on Tuesday, we want to talk to you about riding for Team Honda. That was one of the greatest days of my life. Terry, thank you so much again. I can't wait to see you one day and give you a big hug. I might even have to kiss you like the Bible. The Bible says give a holy kiss. Give a holy kiss. <laughs> I might have to give you a holy kiss. But um, uh, anyway, uh, Terry, I didn't, you know, I knew he was always a good guy, but uh, us young heathen, us young heathen guys <laughs> around him. But Terry always had a demeanor about it. Now I know. Now I understand, Terry. You knew the Bible back in the day. I never heard him cuss. I never heard him heard him talk negative about things. And uh, now I know why. So, uh, Terry Mulligan, God bless you. I don't know, what you, don't know what you learned. I hope you learned something. But uh, God bless you. Well, man, you know what? I want to encourage us tonight to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And know that you know that Jesus Christ is our great God and Savior. And we can be bold and have faith in that. And go forward. You know, the Bible says the righteous are bold as a lion. But those who fear and draw back, they're weak and they're condemned and are scared. God doesn't want us to be scared. He wants us to be bold and not draw back, but press forward in faith. Forget the things that are behind. Forget looking back at the, the rows. You, let's keep looking ahead. Amen. Well, you know what? We Time kind of flew by again. And... Uh, uh, yeah, Larry, amen, Larry, Larry Hughes just came on. Larry is a good buddy of mine from the, the, from the Valley, the Rio Grande Valley. And, uh, Larry and I used to race together in, in the early days. Larry became a pro as well. Larry, we need to have you on the program one of these times, partner. Larry was a pro from South Texas as well. And, uh, that was a story, Larry, that Terry Mulligan, uh, came in there and he hired me to be on team Honda. And that uh, was really good. There's Warren Reed. Hey buddy. Awesome. Well, I'm going to let y'all go. God bless you and uh, appreciate you very much. And we will see you Tuesday night. Tuesday night. Bless you.